Picture this, you and your team work with Airtable, but there is another team at your company that is working with Jira for project management. Now, you want to be able to integrate these two tools, Airtable and Jira, so you can get information from Jira displayed on your Airtable workspace. How can you do that? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate Airtable and Jira step by step so you can work in a more organized and efficient way. Let's do it together. Hi, I'm Caio Calderari from AutomationHelpers.com. We help companies like yours get automated and grow by using industry-leading tools to build portals, apps, integrations, and much more. Subscribe to the channel if you want to leverage tech to help your business grow. Now let's go for the tutorial where I'm going to show you step by step how you can integrate Jira and Airtable. All right, guys, I'm inside Airtable here. And before we actually start the tutorial, I'm going to explain to you the context here. This integration between Jira and Airtable works for multiple scenarios. So you can get the same concepts, the same ideas from this video and apply to various different scenarios and use cases. For now, this is the context. Imagine this. I work at a company and I work in the marketing team. And in the marketing team, we use Airtable. That's the tool we chose to do our project management. So here, for instance, I have this base here that belongs to the marketing team where we have our content calendar. So this is our content calendar management. So basically here, we have a few marketing campaigns. We have some content pieces we are working on. We have some schedules. We have some channels. We have some team members, we have some tasks and also deadlines. So basically here we have a typical scenario where the marketing team is using Airtable to organize their tasks. Basically, that's it. And we also have interfaces, of course, to make things a little bit nicer. We can preview this interface, we can customize it. So basically here on a typical scenario, we would be using this to organize everything we do in the marketing team, right? And the thing is, we on the marketing team, we are working fine this way. Our table is perfect for us. We can customize it. We have everything working well here. And we don't want to just migrate to another option, another software, change our internal processes and have the entire team having to migrate and learn a new tool and everything else. So the thing is, we as a marketing team, we need to know information from the product team. And the product team, for their own reasons, they use Jira. Because for product development, Jira can be a good option. It's very common that product design teams, product development teams, engineering teams, they are used to using Jira. That's a common practice in this field. And we both work at the same company, but in different areas. They use Jira and they use it really well. It works for them. And so there is also no need to ask, hey guys, can you jump into our table and switch Jira with our table? It would work, of course, but well, they are used to their own routines and everything else. So the same problem, we don't want to ask them to just migrate and we don't want to migrate as well, but we need information to work together, to collaborate, but we also don't need a lot of information. We don't need all the information from their Jira and also they don't want all the information we have stored on our marketing air table. We need to know when a new feature they are working on is going to be released or if it's in progress under review or even done. So we can add some tasks here to prepare social media campaigns, email marketing, blog articles, everything that is related to what they are developing and will be available on our software soon, right? So we want to have this kind of communication, this internal communication without having to ask them to send emails or spreadsheets or even ask for access to their Jira or something else because we work here, they work here. And at the end of the day, what we want is just to have some visibility from this environment into our own environment so we can work on a more efficient way and more organized way without bothering them. So how can we achieve this? Well, basically, we can configure an automation to bring information from Jira 
to our Airtable. So basically, this is an integration that we are going to create. Depending on the type of information we want to either send from Airtable to Jira or vice versa, there are a couple automations that are built in here inside Airtable that you can use. You can basically come to the Automations tab here, click to add a trigger. And once you click here to add a trigger, you could choose from a variety of options here to either fetch information from Jira to your Airtable or vice versa. You could send information from your Airtable to Jira as well. We are talking about this specific scenario, but you could be using Airtable for multiple reasons and use cases and another teams could be using Jira. So think about this as Airtable and Jira, not specifically for marketing purposes or this scenario that I'm talking about, but for the tutorial to make things simpler, I'm going to focus on that specific use case. Have in mind that it could be applied to any other use case you have involving Airtable and Jira connections and integrations. Hey, if you need help building a project or if you have any questions, we are here to assist. Visit our website at automationhelpers.com. We are offering free 30-minute consultation calls with our experts so you can get your project done. Visit the link down below and book your call today. Here you have a couple options you can choose when a record is created, when a form is submitted, at a scheduled time, uh, when a webhook is received. So you could use a lot of options here to create the triggers. So let's say you want to do something every day. You can select days or you can select hours. You can select, for instance, every 24 hours. It will start at this date, at this time, and then it will create an automation that will do this every single day, okay? Of course, you could choose any other trigger for now, we are going to use this one just as an example. And the next step is to add an action. Basically here for the trigger, you are defining a condition that once this condition is met, it will trigger. And then something will happen after that. And here we are going to define what's going to happen every 24 hours. Once we click here, we can do a bunch of stuff. We can send an email. We can create a new record, update records, find records, run scripts. And we even have some integrations out of the box here. So you can, for instance, send a message on Slack, send a message on Microsoft Teams, send an email through Gmail. You can access the Google Calendar, Google Forms, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and so on. As we can see, we also have Jira built in here available for us. And we have two options here, Jira Cloud and Jira Server. The difference is this. If you use Jira from their website, you are using the cloud version. So you have to choose this option. If you are hosting Jira on your own server, then you are using this option, Jira server. So you should use this option instead. So that's basically the difference. And we have two options here. We have an option to create issues and another option to update issues. So let's say if we want to add information based on what we are doing here on our Airtable account. And let's say we create a new issue here on our marketing Airtable. And we want to send this information to Jira and create a new issue for the product team. We could use this option here. So we could choose, for instance, instead of using this trigger here, we could select another type of trigger. For instance, when a form is submitted or when we create a new record, then we select the table where we are going to create this new record. And every time this new record is created, we can actually create a new issue on our Jira account. Now, of course, I have to connect my Jira account. So all I have to do is to click Manage Connected Accounts, Create New Account, select Jira Cloud. It's going to ask me to log in. Once I'm logged in with my Jira account, I have to click here to accept. And then my account will be connected. And now I can select this specific account. I select the site. Then it will pull all the projects that I have. I can select the project and also define which type of issue will be created. 
if it's going to be a task or an epic. In this case, it's going to be a task. And then here, the summary field can get information from the actual base record. And I can actually choose one of the fields from my Airtable base to populate this information inside Jira. So basically here, I have to match all the fields that I have inside my Airtable account. And once I do that, I can test this action, run tests, and it will show the information inside my Jira. So if I come back to my Jira account, it will create a new issue with that specific campaign name, which is this new one here. So this way I can use my Airtable account to add information to Jira using the default automation we have built in under the automation tabs. But I want to show you something else because this is not going to be a very common scenario. Like I've mentioned before, we don't want to actually send information from my Airtable database to Jira. I actually want to get information from the Jira that belongs to the product team and get information about the tasks they are working on on my Airtable account that belongs to the marketing team so we can prepare our content in advance. To do that, since under the Automations tab, we only have this option to create an issue and update an issue, this one is not going to work for us. So we need to use another tool to create this kind of automation. That's why we are going to use Zapier. Zapier is an awesome automation tool. We have a lot of videos here on the channel so you can learn how to use it from scratch. So if you want to know how to use Zapier, I recommend you check some of the videos we have here on the channel. We have a full playlist you can watch to learn a little bit more about Zapier as well. We are going to use Zapier right now to create a new automation that will do this job for us. It will get information from Jira and send this information to our Airtable base. So let's create this automation together. The first step is to click here, create. We are going to click here, zap. And here I'm going to choose a trigger. The trigger will be a Jira integration. So I'm going to select Jira here. And again, we have to select either the cloud version or the server version. In this case, I'm using the cloud version. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to click here. And now I have to choose the trigger event. The trigger we are going to use in this case is this updated issue because we want to get information from Jira anytime the product team is updating some issue and changing the status so we can follow what is going on. Let's say they move this issue from in progress to review. This will trigger our condition here. And then we are going to get this information and add this information to our Airtable base. So we don't actually need a trigger to add information to our Airtable base every time they create a new issue because since they are using a Kanban board, they are going to move this issue anyways and it will update the status. And we only need to know when they are actually moving this feature to be reviewed or even done because we don't need to know when they are actually planning to work on that specific feature because we only need to work on the content when the feature is actually close to be released. So if you need something different, you can create multiple apps to track when an issue is updated and once it's created as well. So basically you can create other triggers and other automations as well. But for now we are gonna just create this one. So every time an issue is updated, we are gonna do something. And this something is going to be Airtable getting the update. So we are gonna select Airtable here. And now we are gonna choose an event which is gonna be create or update a record because if they are moving an existing task, then we are going to update and not create a new one because it's already there. We are going to choose this option. Now I need to select my account. I'm going to click here to connect a new account. And then this pop-up window will show up. I have to select my marketing base. So I'm going to click here, grant access and now I have this integrated. Okay, now the next step is to connect the information we are getting from Jira 
into our table. Now let's go back into our table for a second before we do that, because this is important. We have here a lot of tabs, right? We have marketing campaigns, tasks, deadlines, everything else. If we want to, we can bring this information into an existing tab here we are using, but we could also create a new one just to know information from the marketing team. So I'm gonna create a new one start from scratch, and I'm going to call this one Product Team Jira. Now, I have here a couple of fields that come by default. I'm going to just delete them. I'm going to keep the name and status. So this one, I'm going to call task name. We are going to have some status, and we are going to have also due date, which is going to be a date field, okay? Now, this is the structure that we are going to use to receive data from Jira. Depending on how much information you need, you will create specific fields to receive that information from Jira. For this quick example, I don't need a lot of information, so I'm going to just create these ones, for example. Hey, my friend, if you're enjoying this content so far, click the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel to keep learning more about tech and automation. So once I have this table here, I'm going to delete some empty fields that come by default, select them and delete them all. And now I'm ready to go back to Zapier. Here, I have to select the base that I want to use. In this case, it's showing here the marketing content calendar management base, which is the exact one that I want to use. The table now, do I see the new table that I created? Yes, the product team Jira table. Okay, the next step is to select a lookup field. In this case, it can be the task name and the secondary lookup field is not needed, but if needed, we can select maybe the status and here the task name is going to be now the information that we get from the Jira project. It's asking me to test this trigger just to pull in some example data. I'm going to test this. I'm going to select any of these options, continue, click continue. Now I can select some sample data coming from Jira. Now here I want to get the task name, right? So I see here some suggestions already, field issue type name and field summary. Now, if I check here inside Jira, I can check some of these tasks so I can know what's going on. So I have new feature example, AI features and so on. So it seems it's getting this AI features one. So I can select this fields summary option because it's going to give me the task title. So basically here you have to search for the items that will give you the information you are looking for. In this case, I'm looking for the task name. So I have to check if there are fields here that will provide me with this information. The AI Copilot helped me with this one and I think this one is going to work. For the status, I'm going to search status here using the search bar and I can see here the field status name is review. So this one looks okay. For the due date, I'm going to search here the word due date, and then I will find the field that matches this. So I'm going to select this option here, due date, and click continue. Now I'm going to test this step. This one is not bringing any data. I'm going to check this in a second. Now let's go back to our table and see what's happening. So we got the task name, AI features, the status is under review, and the due date is empty, okay? Now, here inside Jira, you will have different fields, right? So, in this case here, I have a custom field called due date, and I can pick different dates here, and once I move this task, it should update information on my Airtable base. So if I move this to in progress, it should update my Airtable base. Now, have in mind that some zaps do take some time to load after they trigger. So sometimes it will take a couple minutes until you actually see the information being updated on your Airtable. That's normal, okay? It's not going to be instantly adding or changing information on your Airtable base, okay? So it's not broken. It just requires 
a few minutes to run. Now I'm gonna rename this zap so I know what it's all about. So I'm gonna call this Jira and Airtable integration and I can turn this on. Now every time I change something, it will show on my Airtable base. Let's do a couple of changes here so we can see everything being added to our Airtable base. So basically here, the product team will be working as usual. They will come in and they will add new features. They will define some due dates. They will move some specific features here. Some will be in progress. Some will be under review. Some will be done. And then your Zap will trigger from time to time. And as we can see a couple minutes later, we can view all the tasks here that are coming from Jira and all the status. And we are not getting the due date. And I'm gonna show you how we can fix that. So I'm gonna click here to edit this field because I haven't mapped this correctly. So I'm gonna look here under due date this field is not bringing any data. And so I can get this option here, which seems to be pulling the information that I want. And now I'm gonna click continue, publish. I'm gonna give it a name that is different because now we have a new version. We are gonna click publish. Now, another way to force your zaps to run is by clicking this little button here to run it so you can test it faster so you don't have to wait until it actually triggers. We are gonna come here on the Kanban board once again and we are gonna do a few changes here. I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna add uh, example issues and I'm gonna move some issues around. I'm gonna add some due dates. So basically the product team will be working as usual, moving tasks, adding new tasks. And once you go back to your Airtable base on the marketing team, you're gonna see all the tasks, the statuses and the due dates. Of course, some of these tasks do not have a due date coming from Jira. So if they don't define a due date on a specific task, then it means it will not be visible here as well because this information was not defined. But if it's defined, it will come to the Airtable base as usual. Now you can add extra fields. You can also customize inside Jira how it will look like and all the data that is available. You can get the description and everything else. Of course, this is just a quick and simple example so you can see how this works. Once you're done building your zaps, just make sure it's on and it will automatically run every time someone makes a change or updates anything inside Jira. Now, of course, this is just a quick and simple example. You can do a lot more than that. You can, of course, use the same concepts and the same idea for other use cases. And if you wanna build more complex types of applications and integrations to help you and your team work better and more efficiently, we can help you build these kinds of integrations and automations and also portals and apps. So make sure to reach out to us, book your free 30 minute consultation calls with our experts and I'm sure we'll be able to help you get your project done. I hope this video helped you and your team work better and faster. And I'm very curious to know what kind of automations you are doing. Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you wanna keep learning more about tech and automation, we have a lot more content for you here on the channel. So make sure you keep watching more videos we've prepared just for you. Thanks for watching and I catch you on the next one. Let's automate your business. Thank you.